Is it necessary to supplement low progesterone? That's that's not an easy question to answer. Um, and so the answer is that it depends. Um, again, it's very important to consider whether somebody is having regular periods or not. I would say if they are, then no, you do not need to supplement progesterone because, because these hormone levels fluctuate so much over time. Um, when you measure a level, you're measuring it at one point in time and not seeing what it's doing all of the other times. So you're not getting an idea of the area under the curve over time, which is, which is really the important thing. And it's that progesterone withdrawal that causes bleeding. So, so if that happens, you're making enough progesterone. And in fact, you're making enough estrogen too, because the estrogen that you made in the follicular phase is what caused the uterine lining to build up enough to have that period later from the progesterone withdrawal. So in somebody with regular periods, I'm not, I'm not worried at all about what their progesterone is doing, what their estrogen is doing, what their um, LH and FSH are doing over time. I know they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, in somebody who's not having regular periods, one thing I often do is something called a progesterone challenge. Um, I'll give progesterone for 10 to 12 days and see if they then start to bleed after it stopped. If that is the case, if it works, that tells me they made enough estrogen to build up that uterine lining in the first, in the first couple of weeks. Um, and that makes me feel better about bone health. Um, but when would progesterone need to be supplemented? I would say, you know, if you have a level that's very low in somebody who's not having regular cycles, um, I think perhaps cyclic administration of progesterone could be something that's helpful giving it to them 10 to 12 days each month to induce a period. Um, I don't like, I don't like progesterone that much. Um, so for, for daily administration all the time or the injection depot Provera that stays in your system for months, um, there's a lot of side effects associated with that. It can it cause minus weight gain for me. <laughs> that's that's common. That's common. It can worsen depression in mm -hmm. some people. Um, and then like consistent administration of progesterone will also suppress estrogen production. And then you have to worry about bone health. Mm -hmm. So I think there are situations where giving progesterone at least cyclically could be indicated. Um, but, but there's a lot of things to consider before doing that. Okay. Do you have any follow-ups? No, I do. I don't. Yeah. Let's throw one variable in there since we are talking about bodybuilders. So when, when you're in a contest prep, and especially in the lower phases and stuff like that, then, you know, most women or a lot of women will lose their period. Mm -hmm. And even when we're coming out of prep, you know, then, you know, it may be a while, some longer than others before, you know, her period comes back. Mm -hmm. So in these instances, there's an irregular cycle going on or, or it's really messed up. So I'm sure that plays into your decision as well, what you would do, because you said, you know, if the cycle is normal, then not make a problem. Well, now it, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. I would intuitively think that, yeah, this doesn't mean we need to start supplementing right now, obviously. But can you go into a little bit of a more reasoning behind that and maybe wait even longer, uh, again, kind of like other hormones, get up to normal body weight, all that kind of stuff? Kind of go into that detail since we talked about yeah. that in other instances. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we know, we know a lot from the eating disorder population, from women who have anorexia and lose their periods. Um, generally, weight restoration, getting back to their baseline weight, their happy place, is what will bring back their period. And in fact, it's 
it's recommended that you do not use birth control pills, progesterone, other things like that before weight restoration. So in a bodybuilder who's post-competition and the plan is to get back to their happy weight, I think it's reasonable to take the time to do that and see if things recover on their own. Um, if, if they don't, then at that point, maybe further evaluation, including some lab tests and consideration of supplementing could be done. Okay. Is there like any type of best practice? I know there's not established, so I'll say more of an opinion about how long uh, to wait once you get to normal or happy weight, as you call it, um, to kind of wait and see. Because again, some people may take, just may take a little bit longer than others, mm -hmm. especially if they were dieting for longer periods of time, which mm -hmm. I would think would have a little impact on that as well. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like two to three months is a reasonable amount of time after weight restoration because, you know, now you've gone through potentially three opportunities to have a cycle that hasn't happened. And, you know, that might be a time that you want to start thinking about it a little bit more. Okay, good. So okay. having a cycle return, the main indicator, you know, mm -hmm. there may be others, but that's the main indicator. Two to three months after back to normal weight is when we might start looking at something else if the cycle has not returned. Yeah, yeah, I think, okay. I think I that's think. reasonable.